This video is about understanding laminitis. Laminitis is a complex disease, much of which we still don't completely understand. We're going to try and give you the latest science-based evidence concerning the disease and fill in the gaps with information that is based upon my clinical experience treating the disease over the last four decades. The first thing we need to do is to understand some terminology about the disease and also the anatomy of the horse's foot. Laminitis is defined as an inflammation within the lamina, the structures that actually bind the external hoof wall to the bone inside of the horse's foot. The bone is often referred to as the coffin bone or the distal phalanx. The attachment of the lamina, once they become inflamed, starts to be destroyed from different mechanisms. When this occurs, the horse's distal phalanx, or bone in the foot, which is sort of slung inside of the hoof wall, starts to descend into the sole, producing the painful results of founder or laminitis founder complex. The horse is said to have foundered once the bone moves downward in his foot, an old mariner's term which referred to the ship going down. The symptoms of laminitis are all referred to pain within the horse's feet. The very first thing that the horse will do is start to shift his weight from his right foot to his left foot. Generally, all four feet are involved, but the front feet are more severely involved. As the pain progresses from the disease, the horse becomes reluctant to move on his own, oftentimes assuming a posture when he moves of his back legs tucked underneath him and his front legs out in front of him, bearing more of the weight on the back of the feet. They're oftentimes reluctant to let you pick up one foot because the opposite foot bearing the weight is more painful and they want to remain on all four feet. Oftentimes they'll walk fairly normally in a straight line, but when you start to turn them, you will see the symptoms of pain in their feet and they'll rock back on their hind end when they start to turn. As the disease progresses and it becomes more painful, the horse seeks recumbency and doesn't want to move at all. There are a lot of conditions which the horse can have, which set them up for laminitis. These are oftentimes systemic diseases affecting the entire animal's body in some way. They can be caused by overeating grain, breaking into the feed, by developing diarrhea from some bacterial infection, Potomac horse fever, diarrhea from that, oftentimes mares with retained placentas after giving birth, can develop laminitis. Oftentimes horses that have excessive concussion to their feet from being worked on hard ground. Oftentimes it's associated with some disease entity that's been going on in the horse for a number of days and then the horse develops laminitis. Our thoughts on this are that something is produced someplace else in the horse's body as the result of those disease processes which arrive in the horse's foot. When they arrive there, they trigger the activation of this enzyme system, which destroys the lamina connection with the distal phalanx and allows the bone to sink in the foot. The second form of the disease, which we described, caused by abnormal hormone levels, is oftentimes seen in horses which are overweight. It's commonly seen with two disease entities, equine metabolic syndrome, which is the overweight horse, and equine Cushing's disease, caused by an abnormal growth within the animal's pituitary. Both forms of the disease result in very high levels of insulin being produced within the animal's system. The high levels of insulin distort and weaken the horse's lamina. We don't understand this mechanism completely as yet, but we do know that this is a slower form of the disease causing stretching and weakening, and eventually the distal phalanx starts to drop in the horse's foot. This form of the disease is most commonly associated with ingestion of large amounts of grass in the spring and the fall of the year, and is probably the most common form of the disease that we see here in the Midwest part of the United States.
The third pathway that we describe is seen in horses with serious injuries to one limb. It can be caused by any form of injury where the horse is made to bear excessive weight on one limb for a particularly long period of time. Every case of laminitis is unique. It's very important that you identify which one of these pathways is involved if you have a horse with laminitis. The biggest mistake that I see made is that people get carried away trying to treat the disease without recognizing which form of the disease they're dealing with. Knowing which form is imperative to successful treatment. It's also important that you seek the advice and skill of a qualified veterinarian and farrier to help you in this process. Take the time to view these videos. It may actually save your horse's life. You can make a tax-deductible donation through PayPal on our website or send a check to this address. We hope you'll join us in freeing the horse from this disease. Thank you.